What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode. For those of you who are new here, my name's Johnny. This is our bus, Miles of Smiles. And unfortunately, Reagan is not here, but we have missed you guys very much over the last, I think, I think it's been about a month since we posted our last video, which I know is a bit off of our, uh, our typical upload schedule that we were trying to stay with, but there's reason for that. So, where the heck have we been? Well, there have been a few things going on in our lives, and if you follow us on Instagram, uh, you would know this, but if you don't follow us on Instagram, go ahead, just give us a follow right now. You're not gonna regret it. Uh, I know some of you may not cross over there, so I'll do a little bit of explaining here. First of all, we moved out of our rental house, which meant selling all of our furniture, getting rid of a lot of things. We still have a ton of stuff, to, well, a lot of stuff to get rid of. We definitely have already given away a lot, and we sold all of our furniture. Uh, but we still have some stuff to sort through. So that was number one. Then, shortly after we moved back into my parents, I found a mass on my lower back slash butt. Regan and I came back from visiting her family in Indiana, and I found this mass on my back on a Sunday night. Obviously, finding a mass anywhere on your body is a kind of a scary thing, right? Everybody's mind shifts to cancer, um, and that's right where my mind went. Uh, so was worried there thankfully only had to be worried for about 24 hours or so uh, I was able to see a doctor on Monday and after talking to him and some of my medically inclined doctor siblings We found out it's an infected cyst. So it's an infected pilonidal cyst uh, It's something that's really common in males because they're hairier uh, people who sit at desks a lot and bikers well, I love to mountain bike and I also have hair on my lower back so uh, that's basically what caused this. Um, a doctor said it's been forming in there for years, but until recently it wasn't infected. So it recently got infected and that's what started causing the problems. So it was really inflamed, painful, and I had to get it drained. And now I'm actually gonna have to get surgery to get it fully removed. So I just went to the doctor two days ago, uh, updated you guys on our Instagram stories. But I went to the doctor two days ago, he was really happy with how it's healing up. Uh, and then in a few weeks, I'm actually gonna get surgery to get it completely removed. And so I'll have an open sore on my back for probably about four to eight, probably about six to eight weeks. Uh, so it's unfortunate, it's kind of changing this summer. You know, I can't mountain bike, can't really water ski because I'm after the surgery, I'm gonna have an open sore on my back can't get in water really at all. I mean, I'll be able to shower and things like that, but yeah. So why do I tell this to you guys? Why do I want to tell you about my butt cyst? Um, well, I said this on Instagram, but it was kind of uh, a step back moment for me and it, it caused me to be really, really introspective. Um, you know, uh, a scare like that, you know, while I, now I know it's nothing major and you know, hopefully I'm just gonna have the surgery and remove it and you know, maybe I'll have another one of these down the road, but hopefully I won't. But that 12 to 24 hours where I had to think in my head, is this cancer? What is this? How is this going to affect my life? How is this going to affect what we're doing with the bus? Am I going to, you know, what's, am I going to live to see the fit, end of the bus? You know, you start having all these crazy thoughts in your mind. But I found a little bit of peace in the fact that we are doing this. You know, we are tackling something that was a dream. This was a far-fetched idea. This was, a, you know, something we weren't really, we, we were just kind of hoped it would happen one day. And then we started taking action on it. And we started making the moves towards doing something that we actually wanted to do, even though it's not something normal. And I think that's what's really important here. And I would encourage you guys to do the same. You know, don't wait. And this was kind of one of those moments for me that really um, caused me to kind of step back and say like, okay, really evaluate what I'm doing, evaluate the people you're around, evaluate what you're trying to do with your life um, because you can't take your health for granted. I mean, uh, I, thankfully I'm a very young and healthy guy and um, I try and stay healthy, stay active, uh, do all the right things. But that that's not to say that, you know, healthy 28 year olds haven't suddenly come down with something um, and things have happened. And so that's what kind of this was a really big eye opener for me and made me really happy that we are doing this and I wouldn't have had to live with 
the regret of not at least trying to do this if something were to have happened. So we're very thankful that that's not the case. It's been a very introspective last four weeks and it's caused me to do a lot of thinking and it's kind of been hard to create content I guess both for here and Instagram you know like when I've come here I really just want to work on the bus and I want to just like be here and be in the moment and enjoy it. Um, I haven't been so focused or really finding myself wanting to pick up the camera wanting to talk um, and you know maybe it's some of that maybe it's just kind of we're busy in our lives right now but I think that had a lot to do with it and so thank you guys for staying patient with us thank you guys for giving us some space um, you know like we've said before every week is our goal but sometimes things happen in your life that you don't know are gonna happen and uh, that's kind of what happened here so all that aside you guys probably have so many questions already as you're looking at this frame. Uh, what is this table pedestal I have in front of me? What am I sitting on? I mean, these weren't even here when you guys were here. What is that drawer over there? What are these lights that are on? Where are the hideous yellow work lights that were in here? Well, I'm gonna break all that down for you guys. So we have made so much progress. Some of it electrical, some of it building furniture, some of it metal work. Uh, we have so much to show you and so this is gonna be a huge recap this is gonna be a huge recap of all the work we've been getting done in the last four weeks I think I'm gonna save the electrical for its own piece um, because it's not quite complete yet we're just running the 12 volt off of an old bus battery uh, and we still have yet to mount the solar panels but they are here and our battery should be shipping should be shipping today only a few weeks late um, but electrical will be coming in another video. But for now, let's get going on all the excitement that has been going on on the Miles of Smiles bus in the last month. So what better place to start than in the seat I was just sitting in? As you can see, we have our dinette chairs finished or built, still need to be painted, still need some cushions, but it's a dinette chair and it's finished. Let me go ahead and break down for you how we went ahead and built these guys. I initially thought that we were gonna have to create some sort of frame for the inside of these and then cover it in plywood. Kind of like we're doing with our cabinetry. Uh, if you haven't seen how we framed those out, go check out this video here. We actually ended up making these completely out of three quarter inch plywood and pocket holes. So basically what you have is a side piece here, a side piece here, and that is all connected to here. This is all one big piece. So you have your two side pieces, a front piece, and a back piece. Uh, and those are just all pocket holes together. So you've got pocket holes going down into the floor, you've got pocket holes securing these to each other, securing over here, and then on the inside, we actually also have removable storage. So I'll show you a little bit on that in a second. But one thing I want to note, guys, that's really important here, and I think gets overlooked by some people when they're building is the discrepancy hang on let me get a better angle you'll notice this isn't just straight up and down this back is actually slanted down here at the bottom we made it four inches wide up here at the top we made it only an inch wide and the reason for that being is sitting straight up is not comfortable chances are most of the chairs in your house your dining room chairs whatever does not have a straight back because it's not comfortable to sit in for long periods of time. So we wanted to make sure and give this a nice slope that was going to give it a comfortable seating position uh, and we also made it nice and tall. So I think from the bottom here to the very top we made the backs 40 inches tall. Uh, the seat height we have at about 20 inches which would mean this back is about 20 inches tall. Now, I'll sit in it, I'm about 6'1", and I think it's amazing. So you'll see, it's just a much more natural seating position. It's much more comfortable, whereas if you're straight up and down, you're up like this. It's like you're sitting rigid at a desk all day. This gives you a little bit of relaxation, you can kind of kick back, much more comfortable. I would say, if you're gonna do a dinette, or if you're gonna make dinette seats, make sure you slant the back, otherwise you're gonna regret it. Also, make sure you make the back high enough. Last thing you want is a dinette seat back that you feel like your back is hinging off the back of. So, two things we did. 
slant back, make it really, make the back pretty tall, and they turn out amazing. Obviously, we're still gonna put a cushion here, and then we're gonna just put a little throw pillow. This will stay as a hard back here. So here when you walk in the bus, you can see the back of this one, we actually left completely open. Uh, so this is gonna be a shoe cubby as you walk in, and then we've got our boop, boop, completely functioning light switches. <laughs> but aside from that, you can see tons of tons of space here. We made these 24 inches wide by 24 inches deep. So these are big, big chairs. One other thing we did in the design, the other piece has a full back piece, or the other chair has a full back piece that comes all the way down. So it gets support the whole way across. But you'll see here, uh, we just added this bottom piece just to add some support between the two pieces of three quarter. But you can see how many, all the pocket holes we got there going up. And then this is what's securing and holding onto our seat or the seat top. So we just took, cut down little strips of three quarter inch plywood just for the seat to rest on. And that should be good. Obviously cut a little hole in it to make it easy to remove. This guy obviously, since it's back up against here in the little coffee bar, uh, you know, still tons of storage space, tons of room, but no open back on that one. Oh guys, totally didn't even think about this, but look, we did our shiplap as well. So we've got a few of the walls covered up. This one you can see here, we didn't quite go all the way to the bottom, but we're gonna have four inch cushion. That's always gonna be covered. And then our back wall is also shiplap. Back there is shiplap too. So we ended up going with a uh, shiplap paneling from uh, Home Depot. This paneling was about $28 a sheet. It's only, I think, 7 30 seconds of an inch thick. Uh, whereas if you get a single eight foot piece of shiplap, that's $10. So we would have been looking at probably $150 or more of actual shiplap boards, which would have taken up more space because they're typically thicker. And this literally gives you the exact same look pretty much, um, or at least good enough for what we're trying to do here. So I mentioned the pedestal earlier, but uh, this is actually a marine seat pedestal. So meant for a seat on a boat. And what's unique about this is this just loosens and drops down. But you may be thinking, how does it drop that low if the floor is right there? Well, we actually cut a hole all the way down into the floor, so this will drop low enough to make a bed. So, since this is meant to be used in a boat, and boats have a lot of space, empty space in the hull of the boat, this would actually get a hole drilled into the hull of the boat so that the extra post can slide down and slide down freely. So we'll probably insulate the inside of this post, fill it up with spray foam, just so don't, you don't get any draftiness coming up from down below. But this thing is gonna be awesome and super easy for adjusting for the bed once we have our table on here. Now, because we use this, we don't have to have any mounts here on the side. Our table's just gonna slide up and down as we want it. And chances are, this isn't gonna have a lot of weight on it. So it doesn't need to be able to support a lot, but even so, it's a seat pedestal. So this mechanism is obviously strong enough for at least somebody to sit on. I think it's gonna be okay for people to sleep on. All right guys, now time for one of, I think, my most, well, we've got a lot of very exciting things going on lately. But this one was just another one of those great Facebook Marketplace finds that I am so happy I came across. So the bus came with a air ride seat that was the air ride was still in good shape. The seat, not so much. The armrest was kind of falling off and we pretty much knew we were gonna get a new seat anyways. But my original plan was to try and utilize the air ride. I realized, you know, I'm actually not the biggest fan of the air ride. It didn't do that much for me. I think I'd rather have a fixed seat and have one that's nice and comfortable. So what I came across is this class A motorhome seat. So this is basically what you'd see in a class A motorhome. And the reason I like it so much, well, there's a lot of reasons. A, it's really comfortable. B, it has an integrated seatbelt, so I didn't have to worry about remounting a seatbelt or doing all that. And C, it swivels. So you can see here, obviously, I'm facing our exterior door, just hanging out here, but 
put all our oil back. And now we're ready to drive and ready to go. So I'm not sure on the exact brand of this seat, but it's really nice leather, really great shape. There's a little bit of wear, but it actually was never sat in. It was just a lot of people using it to get in and out of this guy's van conversion, I guess. But these seats typically start around $700 brand new. You can go all the way up to $2,500 if you want to get crazy with it. We found this seat for $200. So super pumped about this. I had to drive an hour and a half away to go get it, but to me, it's worth it. This thing is basically like a lazy boy on wheels now. All right, now on to the next really exciting thing that's happened since we've been gone. Uh, if you follow us on Instagram, or maybe you've seen the video, we talked about it here, but this front area used to not look like this. Uh, it actually used to look like this. I'll give you some pictures to just put a little context to this whole situation and uh, just let all the people who are worried about rust on their bus just be a little bit more at ease because if we found that and we can make it into this and we found the rust that we did back in the rest of our bus uh, and we made it what it is, you can do it too. So there used to be a bunch of holes up here. Obviously part of that was because I cut some things out and had to remove the rusty metal. But for the longest time, we had just holes. This was, our transmission was completely open here. Uh, you know, this was completely open. This was completely open and I was really dreading trying to figure it out. Uh, trying to get somebody in here who could really understand what I was trying to do with it and get the job done well. Well, I ended up finding a metal fabricator on Facebook Marketplace. What do you know? Yet again, Facebook Marketplace coming to the save. But he came in and had all his ideas on how he could do it. Super good job. Um, so this underneath the kill mat now it's the kill mat, but I'll show you a couple pictures here of the progression. Uh, basically, he cut out a bunch more rot, created some more framing underneath the seat, created some more framing over here, built off of some of the existing framing that was under here, and then put eighth inch diamond plate on top. So really thick, nice thick metal, and we we're gonna leave some of it exposed, but the sound deadening mat is more important in my opinion. So this is probably all gonna mostly get covered anyways, so we weren't too concerned with how it was gonna look. So a few things to note about what we did here that was different than the stock or how the bus came. So one thing was we created a little hatch here. So this little hatch gives us direct access to the transmission. I can see the exhaust down here, a bunch of other hoses and electronics. And that's access that we didn't have before. Well, we had it, but only because we cut a giant hole out uh, because it was rusted. But when the bus was built, it didn't have this. So this was an idea he had, and I thought it was a great idea. Hopefully we never have to service or really utilize this hatch very much, which we're gonna build a, probably a little cupboard over it. Um, but if we do need to use it, we have great access and it's a lot easier to work from the top and the bottom than just trying to do everything from underneath especially when there's things on top of the transmission like different hoses and things and fittings that you need to access so that's one thing we changed i'll show you the other thing so the other thing we changed here is we actually built this up a bit so this was kind of something we had to do kind of but also i was okay with it Basically, the main thing we had to get fixed here was there was a big beam that ran the whole way underneath here that just supported the existing floor from sagging. All it is a cab support. It has nothing to do with the actual frame of the bus. It was just part of the cab. So we cut that out. They rebuilt framing underneath here off of good metal that we had in the back and then put another piece here and then actually stepped down so it wouldn't interfere with the pedal box. And I really, really like it. I was worried at first about the height here. Um, our old seat definitely wouldn't have worked. I sat way too high. I basically was like looking at this up here when I was sitting. Um, but the new seat is great. But uh, this has stepped up about three inches. So this whole floor used to be at this bottom level here and then it stepped up over by uh, the entryway. But he made this nice 45 down into the pedal box. It looks great. 
I got the seat positioned perfectly for myself. I think it looks awesome. And it is a million times quieter than it was before. One other thing that we did up here is we remounted our panel. And you can see we've still got some wires here dangling. But these are basically the remaining wires of what we need in the bus. And so we're going to tuck these back here yet and uh, still finish this off a bit more. But overall, it is a million times better than it was, guys. I can't tell you how happy I am with this. Like, we have a bus that has a fixed driver's seat with a floor underneath it. And we can actually drive it, which is pretty cool. We're uh, not too far away from actually driving this thing on a real road. And then finally, last thing we did up here is I finished the flooring all the way to the front. So we had originally finished our subflooring to here uh, and the framing and everything, leaving ourselves a little bit of an overlap. But because we had to deal with all this metal rusty goodness, uh, we didn't want to build this forward yet. So built that forward, put some additional insulation that we had laying around under here. So we've actually got two inches of spray foam under here, then two inches of foam board insulation under here. Uh, there was a gap that I was able to spray foam when we were doing our spray foam. So that was four inches of insulation under it. Gonna be nice and just help overall with deadening all the sound here. Uh, already, like I said, it is so much quieter. It's like before, the bus was yelling at you and you just couldn't even think when you were in here and the bus was on because literally the, you're basically standing in the engine bay. Uh, but now it's it's amazing how much this has quieted it down. And I'm sure it's partly because of the kill mat, but um, I think it also has to do with the fact that we just closed everything up and it sounds, it is much, much more pleasant. I kind of skipped over the kill mat, but we went with 80 mil uh, kill mat. It's a little bit thicker. I think they have a 50 and an 80 mil. This is just meant to deaden sound. It doesn't do anything for heat really. Uh, it's mostly just a sound deadener. It's a really dense rubber material that you roll out. Um, and we're gonna put heat shielding on the bottom of here. But for the top, uh, the kill mat is, is great. Basically all it is is a big sticker. You know, you peel the back off, put it down, and then you gotta roll it on. So. On that note, I actually ended up breaking a roller while I was first doing it. Uh, I broke a roller and then I got this set of three. I'll link this set below, but these are just so much more robust. They use like uh, actually a decent size bolt that goes all the way through them. They're just heftier, they feel heftier. The first one, I didn't even get through, I think I probably did a third of this kill mat and it broke. It just had little rivets on the end and one of the rivets broke. Um, but this set was like 15 bucks and it gets you three of them. So this one's nice for getting in the corners. This one I used a lot. It's just a good size. And this is obviously nice for nice big spaces. But uh, it's a workout getting this stuff in, guys. It is a workout. But should be worth it in the end. So next exciting thing that we're kind of in the midst of, kind of finished, but I just want to show you guys, we'll maybe go a little bit more in depth about this in another video specific to finishing cabinets and things. But we have functioning drawers. Would you look at that? Look at that. So I will say this has probably been one of my least favorite parts of the whole build out. Um, just because nothing is square and it's just frustrating to get them slide nicely and slide well. It's been a frustrating process. We just need two more slides or one more pair of slides for this bottom drawer we can get in and I'm ready to check this off my list. That's probably part of the reason I'm not going to go very in depth with it because we struggled through it and we're just kind of guessing along the way and tweaking a bunch of things to make it to where it's pretty good. So I'm not your expert on drawers. I'm not gonna tell you guys any advice on how to put them in because I don't really have that much great advice. Again, because we just struggled our way through it and I can't say that I learned what we really did right to finally make them work. We just finally made them work. So uh, maybe it's coming out a later video, but uh, I'll try and find another good drawer video to link at some point. And then last but not least, Look at this. This is a functioning switch right here. This is a functioning switch. Are you ready for it? Pow! 
Pow! Pow! We got our lights working. And then if we keep going back. There's secret little switches under here. Ready for it? Pow! Other secret switch. Pow! Four bedroom lights. Bathroom switch. Pow! So yeah, uh, our electricity is working and we got to throw away our work lights because they broke, A, and because we just hated them. So <laughs> the work lights are gone. You will never see work lights again. We have this beautiful lighting. Um, I especially am very glad we did the under cabinet lights. I think that was a Reagan suggestion, but I love the way it looks, especially since one of them's in front of this white panel. I just think it looks really nice, but it is just so bright in here. This fan, I would show off this fan right now, but I think I just broke it. We've been using a bus battery to power all this. I got new batteries for the bus, so I just took an old one and we've been uh, connecting it in the back. But I put it on a battery charger last night, went to go hook it up and just wasn't, wasn't paying attention in any way, shape or form and swap terminals. So uh, I think it fried the circuit board in the fan because unlike the lights, the fan automatically, the second it gets power, like powers on and does a beep. It doesn't turn on, but it beeps, which means it's getting power or drawing power of some sort. So I got lucky that none of the lights were on uh, because I think it maybe would have affected the lights, but since the light switches were off, and the lights weren't drawing any power, the lights are all good. But I think this fan is now broken. So hopefully not, we'll see, <laughs> fingers crossed. Thankfully, uh, I've been too lazy to wire this one in yet, so this one was not <laughs> wired in, and this one's not broken yet. It is what it is, uh, and we'll have to figure out what we need to do to fix it. So last but not least, I'll just give you guys a little sneak peek of what all has been going on with the electrical. See, we got our 12 volt stuff wired in all the way up there. there. There's our solar breaker switch there. Two charge controllers. This is our inverter charger, Lynx distributor. Got a few more fuses down here. And then this is where the batteries will be. So, old bus battery doing it for us right now. But that electrical is gonna be coming sooner than you think because if you look over here, You'll maybe notice a few panels of solar. Again, if you follow us on Instagram, you saw in our story, we got four 200 watt panels from Renogy, one of which came completely shattered. So I was gonna install them with Chris the other weekend, uh, but we had one shattered panel and we actually realized we should probably seal the roof first before we put the panels on, um, just for ease of doing that and getting good coverage and not trying to work around the panels and all that. So, roof sealants ordered, the Tropicool, uh, we have everything else ordered for the panels and everything else is ready to go. So electrical is right around the corner, guys, and that's gonna be an awesome video. I'm gonna try and get in depth with Chris uh, from Schoolie Living. He's been helping me out. He's been my saving grace with all that. Um, but I'm trying to get, get that to be an informational and hopefully pretty concise video for you guys that really gives you a good breakdown of our whole system, trying to make it as simple as possible and talk through different ways that um, you could set your system up. So I know this has maybe been a weird video. I'm here on a Friday last minute filming. You know, I've had four weeks to think of, uh, you know, video things and be here filming. And I was here till late last night and, you know, we've been here other nights, but again, it's been kind of hard to pick up the camera. I don't know if I've just been in a groove of wanting to get things done. Um, but honestly, like some of the times that we're here and the camera is here, like I just don't even set it up. So it happens, but we're back and we're just very excited about all the projects that are going on right now. So hopefully that's gonna make it, motivate us to make some good content. We've got, um, obviously we've got the electrical coming up, like I said. We've got a cool, poc er, cool barn door hardware to show you that we found that's awesome for tiny spaces. We're gonna make a video specific to that. But overall, um, a lot going on, but we're happy to be putting something out this week for you guys. I hope, 
I hope this was a good little recap, a good video for you guys to get you caught up on where we're at. Hope you didn't miss us too much. Uh, let us know how much you missed us down in the comments. Sorry, Regan wasn't here to talk at all today, but you know, she showed up in some of the clips, I think. But yeah, that's, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Lots of things going on, tons of moving pieces. We'll try and keep you updated as we can win, and hopefully this is the start of getting back on track with the weekly videos. Four weeks was uh, a while away from you guys, and we wanna get back to that goal and um, keep putting out some good stuff for you because you may miss us, but we miss you too, and you don't even know it. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, go ahead, subscribe to the channel if you wanna support us. That's the most you can do. Well, actually not the most you can do. You can also like, you can also comment, uh, you can also share with your friends, um, but thank you so much for being along on this journey. We're happy to have you here and happy to show you the rest of this beautiful build out and everything else we have going on in the future. So that's it guys. We'll see you on the next one.